Welcome to Bowie Pumps of Canada Limited's instructional video series. This video will provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to assemble Bowie's line of advanced combo style seal and bearing design pumps, the Duraseal. Before conducting any service work to your Bowie Duraseal pump, it is essential that you wear proper protective equipment and conduct your work in a safe and clean working environment. Assembling your Duraseal pump can be done with a combination of standard tools and a few pump-specific tools which are manufactured by Bowie. These are available at your nearest authorized Bowie dealer. For this project, you will need the following. An Imperial socket set, flathead screwdriver, straight edge, buoy lip seal sleeve, buoy bearing installer, buoy seal installer, torque gun, rubber mallet, hammer and punch tool, grease applicator handgun, silicone based liquid gasket with a plus 315 degrees Celsius maximum temperature, a petrochemical grade anti-seize lubricant, metal on high tech EP 1.5 grease, ISO 68 way oil, safety gloves, protective eyewear, and steel toe boots. Do not proceed to work on a Duraseal pump if you do not have all the tools listed in this video, or if the tools that you do have are not in good working condition. Only work on a Duraseal pump in a well-ventilated, secure, and safe space. There are three main parts to the assembly process. First, the center case and gears followed by the three short end caps, and finally, the front drive shaft. Before we start, it is important that you clean all components of the Duraseal and check them for excessive wear and tear. Only use new gaskets when assembling the Duraseal. If any parts are showing wear, contact your authorized buoy dealer for advice and direction on whether they are safe for continued use in the pump. Let's begin with the assembly of the center case and gears. With the center case anchored to a surface, insert the two assembly pins into the front of the center housing. Push one housing gasket next to the center housing, followed by a hardened wear plate and one additional gasket. Install the two dowel pins into the holes on the front plate. Then place the front end plate onto the assembly pins with the end cap pockets facing away from the center housing. Put 10 3 8 inch hex bolts into the bolt holes and tighten by hand. Then remove the assembly pins and install the remaining two bolts. With a torque wrench, tighten all housing bolts in a star pattern to 35 to 40 foot pounds of torque. Next up is the gears. First, Lubricate the inner housing and gear assemblies with whey oil. Then insert the drive gear into the drive bore of the housing and put the idler gear into the remaining bore. Place a key into the drive shaft and push the drive shaft into the drive gear. It's important to make sure the extended portion of the drive shaft is facing the front of the pump. Now place a key into the idler shaft and insert into the idler gear. Then guide the two assembly pins into the rear of the center housing. You'll need to place housing gaskets next to the center housing. Depending on the gear material and condition of pump components, the number of gaskets required to reach optimal performance will vary. Start with five gaskets for helical steel gears, or eight gaskets for Buna and rubber gears. With the gaskets in place, there should be less than 10 one thousandths of an inch of clearance behind the gears. To ensure you get it right, hold a straight edge against the gaskets and measure the gap between the straight edge and the gear, ensuring the gears do not touch the straight edge. Add or remove gaskets as necessary to achieve the correct clearance. Once that is done, place the hardened wear plate behind the gaskets followed by another housing gasket. As we did earlier, install the two dowel pins into the pinholes on the rear plate. Guide the rear end plate onto the assembly pins, 
with the end cap pockets facing away from the center housing. Then place the 10 3 8 inch hex bolts into the bolt holes and hand tighten. Remove the assembly pins and install the remaining two bolts. Once again, torque the housing bolts in a star pattern at 35 to 40 foot-pounds of torque. Finally, thread and tighten the drain plugs in the end plates to the same torque. And that's it for the center case and gears. Now we're ready to move on to the small end caps. There are three locations on your Duracell pump that use small rapid access end caps. The steps are the same for each. As a note, when assembling a complete pump, be sure to assemble the end caps on the rear of the pumps first. The first step is to insert dowel pins into the dowel pin holes on the end plate. Next, Slide the bronze spacer onto the shaft with the flattened side facing the outside of the pump. Place the seal sleeve onto the shaft. With the lips of the seal facing the center housing, lubricate and gently add one high-performance lip seal to the shaft and push flush to the spacer, taking care to not damage the seal lip. Remove the seal sleeve. Lubricate the inside of the end cap with whey oil and press the cross-hatched aluminum bronze bushings into place. Next up is the O-ring. Start by applying high temperature liquid gasket to the O-ring groove on the face of the end cap and insert one O-ring into the groove. Push the end cap onto the gear shaft so it's up against the end plate. Line up the dowel pin and hole. Install and tighten six socket head bolts to 27 to 30 foot pounds of torque. When that's done, remove both of the shields on the high load capacity bearing and install the bearing into the end cap using the bearing installer. Ensure the bearing rests against the bearing step inside the cap. Now, secure the bearing by installing the buoy large snap ring into the end cap. Secure the shaft by putting the buoy small snap ring into the gear shaft. You'll need one more O-ring. Lubricate it and place the ring into the groove. Be sure to brush anti-seize compound onto the threads of the end plug. Then thread the end plug into the end cap. Install a grease fitting into the end plug and grease the end cap until you feel resistance. Your small rapid access end cap is now assembled. As mentioned, repeat this process for each small end cap. Now, all we have to do is to assemble the large drive end cap. To begin, grease and install three O-rings into the O-ring grooves on the outside of the drive seal housing. Now, using the seal installer, press two high-performance double lip seals into the inside of the drive seal housing so they are flush with the end. The lips of both seals must face the rear of the housing. Insert two dowel pins into the end plate. Slide the bronze spacer onto the drive shaft with the flattened side facing the outside of the pump. Place a buoy lip seal sleeve over the shaft and gently slip the drive seal housing onto the gear shaft with the lips of the seal facing the housing of the pump. There are five Viton lip seals on the inside of the large end cap. In order to avoid damage to the seals, they must be installed one at a time from the outside of the end cap using the main drive seal installer. Insert three of the Viton lip seals flush to the inner drive bearing step. Place the other two flush to the main drive bearing step. 
all seal lips must face the inside of the end cap. The next step is to remove both shields from the inner drive bearing and press it into the plate facing side of the end cap until it rests against the bearing step. As you did earlier, apply high temperature liquid gasket to the O-ring groove on the face of the end cap. Insert one O-ring into the groove. Again, push the end cap onto the gear shaft so it's resting against the end plate with dowel pin holes aligned. With a rubber mallet and bearing installer, tap the end cap tight. Install and tighten six socket head bolts to 27 to 30 foot pounds of torque. Using a long handled screwdriver for leverage, spin the pump shaft to ensure it turns freely and smoothly without needing to apply any binding or excessive force. In fact, you should be able to turn the pump shaft using only one hand to apply pressure. Now, remove the locking ring from the main drive bearing. Firmly push the main drive bearing onto the drive shaft so it contacts the bearing step in the end cap. The locking side of the bearing must face away from the housing. Now we're ready to install the snap ring into the end cap, securing the internal components in place. Slide the lock ring of the main drive bearing firmly against the bearing. Using a hammer and punch, secure the lock ring onto the shaft with a clockwise rotation and tighten the set screw. Put one grease fitting into one side of the end cap. Apply grease into one fitting until the opposite fitting hole slightly seeps grease. This will ensure the pump is properly lubricated. Screw the other grease fitting into the end cap. Your buoy Duraseal is now assembled and ready to get back to work. If you have any questions or require more information, please contact Buoy Pumps of Canada Limited or your nearest authorized dealer. Thanks for watching.